Welcome to the video on winning material. So this video is going to build on principles that we have covered with regards to attacking pieces, how to evaluate various exchanges and trades. Because during the course of a chess game, you're going to be faced with situations where there are multiple pieces under attack, and you have to decide whether exchanges benefit you or your opponent, are there multiple options, or only one that may give you an advantage. So to recap, you've already learned about some of the ways to win material. Obviously, if there's an unprotected piece that you can capture and take, that's often beneficial because it's for free. Right. You've also learned about the advantageous, profitable exchange, where through a sequence of moves, by piece value, you can evaluate an exchange sequence to be either good or bad for you. We've learned about the concept of the twofold attack, when two or more of your pieces are attacking one of your opponents, or vice versa of course, and the very simple idea of recapturing pieces, right? Some pieces are worth more than others, so obviously if you're able to take a piece worth more than the one that you are losing, that often results in a profitable exchange for you. All right, so in this short video, we're going to go over four examples where there are a few possibilities but only one or maybe two are the correct moves in each situation. All right, so with each position, it is your job to identify, number one, what piece, if any, can be captured, and secondly, if it's a good idea to go ahead with the exchange, and maybe even thirdly, which way to proceed with the exchange. You're going to have situations where because multiple pieces can take the same piece, you have to decide which one to lead with first, right? And as we've covered, we often want to lead with the least valuable piece because it likely will be captured. All right, so let's take a look at this first position, the simplest by far. Let's pretend that we are white. What do you think you would do in this position? All right, so the first thing is to identify if any of the opponent's pieces are under attack. In this case, it's pretty easy to see that yes, the knight on f4 is undergoing a twofold attack via white's rook on f1 and bishop on d2. So if it's white to play, what do you think you would do here? The answer is bishop takes knight on f4. Okay, because after knight takes bishop, the rook recaptures, and what happened after that exchange? While white lost one bishop, he received two knights in return. That is three points worth of value. That's a profitable, advantageous exchange for white, so this would be a good decision. Now, maybe you thought, oh, I might want to take with my rook. Okay? Now, while white is still getting two pieces in exchange for only one, the difference is the piece that white lost is more valuable than in the previous variation. Whereas white only lost a bishop in the first example, in this line, white lost a rook instead in exchange for the two knights. Again, Still a slightly advantageous, profitable outcome for white, but not as good as being left with the lone rook, which of course is worth more than the bishop. So bishop takes f4 is the correct move and the correct way to recapture. Again, it's very important that we don't just automatically take things. We have to evaluate in a tactical sequence, move for move, who is getting what. All right. Moving on to the next example. A little more complicated here. So first things first, let's evaluate the position. Material is completely even. 
two pawns and three minor pieces each. So in this game, black took white's knight on c4. The question is, what should white do in this position? It may seem fairly simple that white has two good ways to recapture, with both the knight and or the bishop, right? In both cases, you are getting a knight on c4, and the bishop and knight support each other. However, you have to look a little further. Only one of these recaptures is the correct one. Which one is it and why? The answer is knight takes knight. This is the correct way to recapture. So here, you see that the bishop on e2 is supporting and protecting the knight on c4, so that if black takes the knight, white can recapture the bishop. So you may ask, well, what's the difference? What is wrong with bishop takes c4? Because the same thing happens, right? This knight on e3 is protecting and supporting the bishop on c4, so that if black chooses to take on c4, white can simply recapture and it's an even trade. However, you need to look at every possibility, not just exchanges and captures on the main square. What is the problem with bishop takes c4? See if you can find it. Again, you have to consider your opponent's moves, so what, what should black do here? The answer is not bishop takes c4, but there's a tactic here where black can actually take this knight on e3 with check first, removing the guard of the bishop on c4, so that when white takes with his king, nothing is defending this bishop on c4 anymore, and white is actually losing a piece for nothing. Okay, this is a classic example where you need to evaluate all possibilities, especially when there's multiple recaptures. So even though there's a two-fold attack on this one piece, there is only one correct way to recapture here. All right, and that's with the knight. Because if you go with the bishop, you will be in for a rude awakening if black takes on e3 first, the correct move order, which wins a piece. All right. Example number three. So here we have a situation where white is clearly in check via the bishop on d5. And we have gone over the various ways of defense with regards to the legal ways to get out of check, right? So whenever you're put in check, you have to go through them in your head, which hopefully you're doing now. All right, so when you're in check, you can either move your king, you can block the check and interpose with something, you can take and capture the piece that is delivering the check, All right? You can't cast a lot of check. So you have to evaluate all possibilities. So what would you do here if you were white? To help solve this problem, we need to talk about the concept of strategic planning, all right? So in this position, uh, let's pretend for a second that white is not in check, all right? So imagine that there's either something in the way here or this bishop on d5 is not on this square, okay? So my question to you is, if it were white's move in this position, again, just pretend the bishop's here on c7, for example. If it were white's move, what would you play? The answer is rook to h8 checkmate. All right, it's checkmate because black's king can't move anywhere and it cannot take because your bishop on c3 is protecting it. Okay, so this is important because when you are playing, you have your plans, especially when checkmating the opponent's king. You have to be aware of these and not get distracted by what's going on on the other side of the board. This happens all the time. Okay, so let's try and put two, to, two together. If you were not in check, you would be able to checkmate your opponent. So what do you think you would do here if you were white? 
The answer is queen takes d5. Now, you would never be able to find a move like this if you were thinking about it purely on face value, right? Because sure, you are taking the piece that is checking you, but this looks terrible, right? Because we've learned that the queen is way more valuable than the bishop, and we're giving up a queen for a bishop here. This seems like a very silly thing to do. However, it is a very powerful sacrifice because after pawn takes queen, we are able to do what we wanted to do in the first place and checkmate black's king, and we win the game. Okay, so in this position, if we were to move the king, for example, or block the check, black would do the exact same thing. Unfortunately for us, as white, our rook on h1 is hanging for free. All right, same thing here. Black can just take, and that's a free rook for nothing. All right, so very important situation here that you need to evaluate a all possibilities. Don't just reject a capture because you're losing material. There could be a very good reason why you may want to temporarily sacrifice something. And here we see that after queen takes bishop, right? Black has to defend against the checkmate, otherwise he will lose, right? And if he defends against the checkmate, you have just won a bishop, a full piece for nothing. All right, last but not least, final example. You are the white pieces. What would you play here and why? So here we have a situation where we have not only a two-fold attack, but we actually have a three-fold attack, right? Because we have one, two, three pieces all attacking this bishop on e4. However, just like the other examples, there may be only one correct way to take this piece. Is there? And if so, which one is the correct way? Just like the previous example, while we were looking for checkmate, we also have to look at what our opponent's trying to do. So here, kind of flipped around, we are on the defensive side of things because we need to notice that our opponent is threatening checkmate in one move. All right, so just like we checkmated on the h8 square in the last example, here black has a one move checkmate threat on the h1 square. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a big hint. The only way to have an advantageous exchange here and the correct move for white is queen takes e4. The reason why is because it is the only option that not only wins a piece, but simultaneously defends against this queen from going to the h1 square. Okay, because obviously if the queen were to go to the h1 square, we do our counting. I have two pieces attacking this square versus only one for black. So I'm going to come ahead out of this exchange. I have no choice but to take, of course. But black loses a rook after that sequence. Okay, so after queen takes e4, right, if black trades queens, I now can simply recapture either way with either the rook or the knight, and I've won a piece. Or if black delivers a check on h2, I still have an escape square to run away to f1, and, and I've still won a full piece for nothing. All right, so notice how, again, after either rook takes bishop or knight takes bishop, queen to h1 checkmate still happens regardless of which way you choose. All right, so short and sweet, but some very important examples here. There are, of course, millions that you could come up with. But just remember, during the course of a game, when there are multiple capture possibilities, when there are twofold attacks, when you are evaluating move for move, piece values, and exchange outcomes, you have to be aware of what is going on around the position, not just on the square itself where multiple pieces are attacking. Because, as we've seen in these examples, there could be only one correct way to take something and win material.
Thank you for watching, and be sure to practice the examples that go along with this video. Thank you.